Okay, we're finally back. Okay, so I've been doing some work around oh. here, and you may notice something. Why do I have so much cobblestone in my inventory? Well, uh, what if I told you I was, I was, I'm going to try and build something? Something that can guarantee a little more safety or a little more liberty of things. Okay, so we're here now, and yeah, I gotta put this on. I like, gosh, then I can't see. I have to do this now. So yeah, you may be wondering what I'm doing here, of all places. Because I want to make something for the people, I guess. I don't know if they made it already, or if they have made it. I'm not, a, I'm not aware of it. But I want to make, make it like a little bit easier for them, because... Truth be told, I'm, truth be told, I don't know if you noticed, but when you die, you lose your experience points. And it can be very challenging, like, especially with like 50 or 60 or 70, all those levels up. So, I want to try and make it a little more uh, simpler to have them, you know, to get more experience levels, which is why I'm here right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and build as far as, I, as far as I can with however many stone I got. And we'll see where it goes from there. What's wrong? So my idea was to utilize the same bridging pattern I did with the portal area, use some cobblestone slabs, and then use some stone brick slabs on the stone brick walls to prevent some moths from spawning. And man, let me tell you, this was the most riskiest things I've ever did. Like, I was literally over the void, literally building this darn bridge across there. And one wrong move could end certain doom. But luckily I made it a little more safer by making it three blocks wide instead of like one block. And also, once I got the stone bricks, I'll place them along with the corresponding brick walls as well. And if I ran out of brick walls, I just use torches, as you can see right here, just so that the end won't spawn on those top half slabs. So yeah, I would, every time I get the new brick walls, I replace the torches with those walls, and I would, and I'll just continue using stone cobblestone slabs in order to bridge out. I believe I bridged out a total of 190 blocks out from the obsidian platform area. And once I finished doing that, inserting the walls and everything, I then started to build the platform where I would basically farm the endermen and the ender and experience points. Man, I can't believe I missed that much. Also, around here, my creative liberties took over, and it's had to be a little house area, a little safe spot, so that people can come over here and see the farm for themselves. I also decided to go back home to get the chest and the hoppers needed to necessary to collect any stray ender pearls that may fall from the farm. Hold on, I think I see some of some people inside. Did I not light that area up real good? Hold on. Yeah, it is like the house area. Did someone delete my torches? Uh, yeah, I think someone did delete my torches. What the heck? Actually, what happened is that for some reason, when you enter an end portal through the overworld, it deletes anything you place on the obsidian blocks. Meaning I had to resort to lanterns or something that's away from the obsidian platform just so they won't despawn. Hopefully that works. So yeah, after that dilemma, I decided to go back to the stony waste to mine for some stone and everything. And wouldn't you know it? The lanterns also despawned. I guess anything three blocks above the obsidian platform is also a no-go as well. So I had to think of something else. But other than that, I had to place out some temporary torches in the meantime, so I could f finish building the little house area where the endermen will fall over. Utilizing the stairs and slabs as the roof so that they won't be able to spawn on the roof, which will get annoying sooner or later. Anyway, back to the stone ways to collect some stone, and for some weird reason, every time I went to the overworld, I would get attacked by some kind of phantom. Yeah, that's strange, I don't know why, it's definitely too much sun for them to spawn, but nonetheless, I got attacked by a phantom, and that kept happening every time I went to the overworld. Yes, I think someone has to fix that real quick. So yeah, after that dilemma, I went back to the end mission so I could finally build about 42 blocks up high so that the enemy can suffer fall damage. But basically, we have enough to be one tapped by the player. Man, that looks tall. Oh wow. Can't believe I had to build that tall up. But alright, it'll be over soon. <laughs> okay. So, we're almost done. We've got to build a platform, find an endermite, and I should be in. Wow, that's cool. At the moment, making the platform out of slabs up. Uh, top half slabs, just so that they be able to spawn. Should I put it on a uh, end bricks or maybe just cobblestone? I think it's cobblestone. Just as the aesthetics. All right then, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Just gotta put the platform. At this point, yeah, it's pretty much just a rinse and repeat process. Go back to the store anyway, I mentioned. Collect cobblestone. Go back home, and then quickly get enough food to run back to the stronghold. 
and then enter the end portal and then run back to the end Durban farm and thankfully nothing spawned there. And even though the bridge and the neck was a hard part, man, I believe this was the hardest part of them all. You had to literally bridge up and then hold shift and as much as you can as you built the platform 12 blocks from the center ring. And let me tell you, this was the, one of the most nerve-wracking things I've done. I know I said that a lot around this thing, or maybe just too tent. But this is the hardest part of them all. And you had to make sure you don't fall down at any cause. Because even if you did put a clutch, chances are that you'll most likely get waterlogged and you most likely just miss it everything. So yeah, I had to build like three block wide platforms in every direction. And then once that was done, I had to quickly fill in the middle bits with a lot of slabs. Thankfully I brought my stone cutter and some dirt in order to make a safety platform so that I don't fall in the smack down my center. And let me tell you, my finger was hurting throughout this whole process. Like, literally, I had my finger on the shift key this entire time. And not only that, I also had to light up this air around here because as the platform got, kept getting bigger, more dark spot to experience. So I had to not only worry about the, the, my, the safety of my own finger, but also the safety of my in game character. Because if an enemy starts spawning, there may be an issue over there. But yeah, nonetheless, I was able to light up the area and finally finish the platform. Yeah. Even my, my finger at rest, like, if, even while editing this, my finger kind of hurts, but at least it's better now. But yeah, after that, I, I put in the iron bar with the moss carpet, which is where the enemy will go, and then I had to quickly go back home, and basically just get a name tag, a mine card, some rails, and some trap doors. So yeah, I put Farmer Might on the name tag over there, and now the other hard part, which is not the most riskiest, but it's just the most tedious part. Trying to get an enemy to spawn. My goodness gracious, this thing was so rare to get that I literally started losing health and started chewing through all my food just to get to an enemy. I also had to resort to hunting enemy down using the safety platform left by some players. So yeah, it was just like a sort of rinse and repeat, just whole hunt some enemy men and then just try again. And man, this took a while to get, like, I even hadn't had to wait until the next day to do this. Yeah, you just go down the stairs, get some enemy men, and then make the platform a little bigger, I guess. And so I finally got the enemy mate. All I had to do was name tag the little guy, and then basically get him inside the mine cart. Which was a little harder than I expected. I just had to extend the rail line to the little and I had the minecart be a little mobile for that to work. But nonetheless, I was able to push it back into the correct position, and then all I had to do now was to get rid of all the torches. In total, this took over 10 hours to make, but hey, it was a risk we're going to take for the community and for the people who need easy experience levels and some ender pearls for easy fast travel and whatnot. So yeah, definitely do it again. Okay. And this is that we're finally done. And as you can see, it's working. It's actually working. The Android farm's finally working. There we go, yeah, alright. Three experience points and end pros. Best of both worlds. And perception right okay. He's gonna get not get too close to this thing. Oh what the? One of them even got past it. Okay. Oh, this one hit. Okay, good. Yes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, so there are a few outliners over here. I may have to cover this up with, with lights and everything. But other than that, it's, it's pretty solid. A very simple farm to use. You can just slice them with your sword and gain other experience. You lost all your death and even one tap all the outliners that happened to escape the. I think it's because the thing got so crowded that they needed someone to teleport to. Okay, so I just put myself hook him to level 60, and yeah. Another thing I also forgot to take note, this chest fills up pretty quickly. Also get Enderman heads. Okay. So I need to take it, so I need to get rid of these somehow. Cause I, cause I think eventually the hobbits will fill up. Alright, so I'll be right back. Yeah, it was actually as simple as putting some double chests around. And you can use those to easily fill up those chests when the main chest fills up with enderpearls. So you continue farming with ease. And also on a side note, this is me one tapping the enemy in the farm. Yeah, even without a sword, this thing is pretty useful. 
pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so the first ever community farm is finally built. All right. We just need to light it up, and that's about it. All right. Anyone can use this farm to whatever run. If it lose your experience, they can just regain back up. That's the beauty of it. Also, we have these now. Why? I'm not sure. Psych! You thought I was done, did you? There's actually... There's actually something else I kind of forgot to do. Okay, we're back here. So I can finally put the carpet on this thing. Maybe that's what's stopping the first one. Can I put carpet on this one? I can't. Oh, I can, okay. I have to make sure it's out of the way. Okay. And then we got the carpet set up. That should hopefully spawn that stop them from stopping over there. If not, I'm gonna have to do some other events. Like, pour some water, I guess, on that area. But so far, it seems to be working, I guess. I don't think they're spawning anywhere else. Okay, nope, they are still spawning. We just have to implement some water tactics. Okay. And done. There we go. Put a little water. And that should be it. Okay, so now this attempt. Though I didn't really see any, any enemies spawn here since I came up here to fill the water. And since I filled this up with carpet, so I guess so I guess that's kind of an improvement. I may have may have overdone it, but hey. For science. So yeah, you just gotta make sure not to mine any of these blocks. It should be fine. Let's put water. So yeah, now I should be able to mine these with ease now. But I have to worry about end of it. Hopefully at least anyways. But yeah, if anything if anything happens wrong, I guess they can just change it, I guess. If they're gonna change the roof, however, make sure you de waterlock these. I take out the water, because otherwise we'd be flooding this whole area right there. Now I think we're done with the farm. I just need to get another bucket of water, that's about it. I might put some I might put some soap lanterns here and whatnot. Okay. Okay, so maybe maybe some still out with it. But that's fine. Alright. We have to cover all the air with water. I think it's up to where the shadow ends right here usually. Well, at least as long as we're not well, as long as we're not spawned on the rooftop, that's fine. I don't really mind here, that that's just fine. I just mind if it's on the rooftop, I guess. Okay. okay now I'm done with the Enderman farm. Thank goodness. Alright. <laughs> it's been take it's gonna been taking a while now, but yeah. Oof. I think the next, I think the next farm I should build should be a, a cow crusher. Because, okay, because I just remembered I, ha I spent a lot of food trying to get that endermite. And all I have left is, is some cooked mutton and pork knuckle, which you can actually get by smelting pork chops. And it gives it the same saturation effect, but only for less. So I guess some steak is the way to go. I just need to, to make like a cow crusher, and then we should be fine. But yeah, now the episode is over. Okay, thank goodness. I'm not sure how long this is gonna be. It's, it's probably gonna be like a short video or like a medium long video. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know you guys in the comments down below. I can't forget to check out other stuff in the meantime. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.